So these electrodes here will send my brain signals to this machine. And this machine will detect my intention and it will move for me. Okay. Ah, stop. Japan is obsessed with robots, tech, and AI. My name is Cassandra Bo, and today I'm on a mission for DW Shift. Bionic limbs, microchip implants, power suits. For decades, cyborgs have been an integral element in our pop culture. However, along with the progression of technological innovation, for example, in the field of medicine, this kind of cyborg technology has been turning more and more into a reality. The bionic industry is on the rise. Its representatives are confident that we, basically meaning all of humanity, will sooner or later all turn into cyborgs. I'm not really sure what to think about that. I mean, I wonder, is this the beginning of a new era in evolution where people will have no physical limitations? Or will there be a trade-off to our disadvantage? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Well, to gain some clarity here, I actually decided to become a cyborg myself. Stay tuned and tag along. I have to admit, given the fact that I'm living in Japan, it wasn't very difficult to find a perfect person to talk about cyborg technology and to also give me access to it. Here in Tsukuba, one and a half hours away from Tokyo, my team and I are going to meet this guy, Professor Yoshiyuki Sankai. He is a renowned scientist and businessman and one of the spearheads of the cyborg movement. But before I talk to him, let's have a quick look into what a cyborg actually is. The word cyborg is an acronym of cybernetic and organism. In various definitions, a cyborg is described as a hybrid being, meaning half human, half machine, or a bionic human with organic and mechanic body parts to improve a certain bodily dysfunction or enhance capabilities. But yeah. it's definitely Back to Professor Sankai. For over 20 years, he has been developing robotic suits or so-called exoskeletons. The first thing the professor tells me, I am already a cyborg. You can think of it this way. Humans, especially Homo sapiens, use tools and objects immediately after birth. For example, these glasses of mine have become a part of my body. And I think no one can live without their smartphones anymore. We are constantly wearing or being close with technology. In that sense, we are born cyborgs, don't you think? And this suit is Professor Sankai's most advanced product to date. HAL, short for Hybrid Assistive Limb. It can actually help disabled people to walk again. And believe it or not, it can be controlled by brain waves. So I wonder if I can do that. Let's give it a try. So these electrodes here will send my brain signals to this machine and this machine will detect my intention and it will move for me. So if I lock my arm, but I have the intention of moving my arm, it will react. Okay, stop. Remember when the exoskeleton went a little bit crazy in the beginning? Well, this was because hell wasn't yet properly adjusted to me and the signals were too strong. Now that the suit has been calibrated to me, let's give it another try. See how it's almost instantaneous? It's actually instantaneous. I'm going to try to move this with my arm locked. Well, it's moving. <laughs> and my arm is not moving. Did you get that? So, what just happened? My brain sent a command to my muscles through the spinal cord. Hell's built-in sensors analyzed these bioelectrical signals. Then two motors sent mechanical impulses that caused the suit to move. So this might look easy when I'm doing it, but for patients with paraplegia, this is much more difficult since their nerve connections are heavily damaged. But HAL sensors are capable of recognizing even the tiniest residual impulses. Still, only about 20 to 30% of patients with paraplegia are eligible for this kind of therapy. 
But Dr. Yoshiyuki Sankai states that pretty much all of these patients can expect improvements in their physical functions. There was a boy who was diagnosed with a complete spinal cord injury due to a car accident at the age of two. He was completely paralyzed from the chest down and could not move even a little. He had been like this for more than 10 years. However, after our treatment, the boy was able to move his legs and even lift his feet by himself. This also shows how the central nervous system has the potential to reconnect and regenerate different cells and functions. So this might also be very useful for able-bodied people like me. I wonder if by using hell, I could actually learn new skills like karate. I want to know more. I am now going to wear the suit. So I've changed into Cyberdyne pants. And basically this pants, um, it unzips in a convenient area to put these on my legs and on my hips. So basically 18 electrodes. Oh, and in case you're wondering about this, Cyberdyne, does this ring a bell? Well, when I heard the name, I had instant flashbacks of the movie Terminator. Part of the story is a corporation named Cyberdyne Systems, which created a revolutionary AI system. Well, turns out, although he has always been a science fiction fan, Dr. Sankai, founder of the real Cyberdyne company, assured me the company name wasn't inspired by Terminator. Back to reality. Basically what happens is here, right here, it focuses on the extension of my limbs. And then right here, it focuses on the flexing of my limbs. Altogether, it takes about 30 minutes to get inside hell. Last step, getting hooked up on the treadmill and the harness. Remember, this is not for people like me, but for patients who can't walk due to spinal cord injuries or cerebral embolism. The harness provides stability and balance. Are you feeling heavy? So, um, I just move my leg. It's pretty easy to move. I feel like I almost don't have to do anything. <laughs> I'm starting training right now. Okay. I feel a little bit mechanic with my movement. But I think it's just getting used to the machine because now I feel a little more comfortable in it. But it's very interesting. It's definitely like learning how to walk again. Uh, oh, hi. Don't <laughs> So now he's increasing the speed. So there's a screen in front of me monitoring my movements. So the waveforms on the screen is the level of the signals it's receiving from my brain and from my muscles. And you can see there, if you can see my feet there, it basically detects the pressure in which feet I'm moving. And this is what makes hell so unique. While sensory nerve information is transmitted to the brain, synaptic connections between nerves and muscles are strengthened. And eventually, this improves and re-establishes physical functions such as walking without having to wear hell. As of now, around 2,600 hell suits are being used for rehabilitation in Japan and overseas. I keep asking myself, who can afford a suit like this knowing that exoskeletons tend to be very pricey at this point? I learned that hell is actually not for sale, but it can be rented by institutions. In the long run, the core technology of hell is not just applicable for patients with paraplegia and other dysfunctions. It's also aimed to support people in labor fields that are very physically demanding. For example, care workers. But eventually, Professor Sankai's technology and vision goes much further beyond the framework of an exoskeleton. The exoskeleton technology is just one form of the whole field. The important thing is that by simply wearing this technology, a person can become a cyborg. 
It is a technology that combines signals from the human brain and nervous system with robotic technology to enable humans and robots to move as one. That's why he actually founded a new interdisciplinary field called Cybernics, which is based on the fusion of human, machine, and information systems. It combines research from various fields. Obvious ones such as neuroscience, robotics and computer science, but also ethics, psychology, social science and law. With innovations such as hell, Professor Sankai says he aims to solve social problems and create new industries. His overall vision? To merge physical space and cyberspace with the help of robot technology. This is what he considers the next step for society.